Don't film me, I don't know what's going on. What else do we have to take off of here? Looking awkward. Jesus. All right, Aiden is installing the windows in the Durango. He said they're held up by friction. All right, so Bobby is back at the Durango. He did get the hood cut out, and there is the look of the blower as it sits right now above the hood. So that's actually the first time that the hood's been on there with the blower mocked up on there, on the mock-up block. And there's Bluetooth stuff in between, fuel injection and stuff like that, it's all Bluetooth. So, and that's what this is, blue tooth. <laughs> blue tape. So the blue tape is kind of Bluetooth, but. So that will be the look of the Durango. Bobby's working on the back end. He's got some other bars taped in there that, um, He's looking for NHRA approval on. He's going to go out to Vegas uh, for the Dodge Roadkill last call event. So it'll be on display out there um, with it as far as Bobby gets it before it leaves there. So we still do have a goal of six summer. Right, Bobby? Actually running. So actually running and racing. And, yeah, racing, so, running and driving. That's our goal. So we keep kicking the goal back a little bit. So... Literally 2.0 is still in Florida. Transmission's over there. We still got to take it to Rosler. So the goal is to keep 2.0 out of here. Therefore, Bob can work on the Durango. So, because if 2.0 comes back, then all of a sudden Bob's working on 2.0 again. So if you haven't seen EJ's viral video of changing the tractor tire, she did post that up. So she does have her tractor tire video is out there trying to go viral. So, right? Did it hit viral status yet? <laughs> It's almost there. So Durango, then we got the ship box back here. The wiring stuff is coming in. Engine is at Steve's shop, uh, but it's done. I, got, I saw a picture of it. So Aiden is doing the wiring on this. So that should be underway because this should be ready for six summer. Uh, they did, since it got back from Autorama, uh, bumper fitted and mounted, so we need to send that off to get chrome. Aiden did talk to a guy down at uh, Autorama in Tennessee that can do the, the chrome on the fiberglass, so we're gonna try that. Aiden, are you gonna get the back bumper re-chromed? They got a match. So, all right, so the front and back bumper will go to get re-chromed. Uh, no engine in it. And it is now called the Trans is in it. We do have to, we still got to do a converter change for it. Um, what else? But the patina on this is actually, I think, cooler than cooler than the ship box. Now it's the deuce box. So, but that's coming along, getting the, like I said, wiring done. And Aiden's goal is to have this ready for six summer as well. So we got that, that going. We got the Durango going. Uh, St. Patrick's Day coming up, get your sick leprechaun shirt. So that's over on the merch site. Get those while they still last. Uh, what else we got? We are going to go to Byers. So Byers is the tow company that towed the 350. So we've gone down the road where they contacted us. They want us to come sit down with them and go through the um, 
go through their procedures that they went through when they got it. And a lot of people have contacted them based on seeing our other video. Uh, so whatever, we want to go down the path with that. So there's updates there and there'll be more updates on that. So know that we are pursuing the truck stuff to try and get to the bottom of why it's not my truck anymore and it still should be. And so we got updates on that as well. So we got that. We got those items. We got to get ready for six summer. So routes coming up. So if you haven't, if you're on the wait list for six summer, know that some people are coming off the wait list because there were some people that signed up for, they tried to sign up for sick ward for six summer and instead they registered for six summer. So we do have spots that opened up there uh, that we are pulling people off so they get in there. So get on the wait list because we will be pulling people from that. Uh, I also did think about it, I post on my personal page, but like looking at the possibility of a motorcycle class, that if we do a motorcycle class, who's interested? So obviously let us know if you're interested in that, uh, if you are a bike rider, because we're going through Wisconsin, I'm like home of Harley Davidson. If we we're ever gonna do a bike class, it'd be cool to do there, even though Florida's bike week. So, I mean, we'd probably carry over in future events, but so we got that. And that's a whole bunch of long-winded stuff that I'm telling you. So Durango update, we got that. And then we got the F350 update and where we're at with that, go talk to them. And there you go. Thanks for watching guys. We got all this for you. What is today even Wednesday, Wednesday night. So Autorama set up, we got the Sick to Mag uh, merch trailer down here, ice cream truck. We got uh, uh, Tom and Audrey from Missouri came in and we got the, the ship box on display here. So we got the ship box down. We still got one more car to bring in the morning with all the rain. Luckily Tom came with an enclosed trailer because my big trailer's in Florida. So use theirs to bring this down. Then we got to bring the Durango in the morning. So lots of cool stuff you'll be able to see down here. Uh, we got ice cream truck, uh, the ship box, uh, the Durango, the giveaway Tahoe, which is a little iced over. We just drove that down. Uh, we got Tom and Audrey here. We got uh, uh, Scott. Um, Scott coming with the Corvette. Uh, what we got? We got Ted coming with his Willys. Uh, we got Rick Callahan bringing one of his cars. Can't remember which car Rick is bringing down. So we got seven drag and drive cars on display. Plus, that's just in our display, plus ice cream trucks in the Summit booth. Durango's gonna be in Murray's booth. So basically nine cars we know of that are gonna be down here. So it should be a good time this weekend. on the truck video and buyers contacted me this is bill buyers second generation owner of buyers correct so i want to tell the story about their process and the whole thing with the truck and how it came to them and then the process that followed after that so here's what i can tell you is though our first video on the truck getting taken went live on september 30th they were called to pick it up on october 3rd um from a local place or whatever around here so the question is did that then get dumped right after we reported it and then go through the system but then once you guys got the call on october 3rd tell me your process we got called by a property owner to pick up a vehicle under michigan state law we contact oakland county sheriff's department they sent a car out to check the vin number to verify the vehicles aren't stolen and do a third-party inventory on all our impounds 
They arrived, found out the vehicle was stolen out of Waterford. They notified Waterford Police Department that the vehicle was recovered stolen. We towed it into our yard under a police hold for Waterford. Um, and and it then when it goes through that police hold, then you said there's a certain times it start to take a face? Well, or what, uh, they don't uh, take when, face till Waterford releases it? Or yeah, what's right. The, okay. uh, so under, uh, when it's in here is under a hold, it's being held for Waterford's investigation of the stolen car being stolen. Waterford Police Department called our office, released the vehicle, said they were done with it. So that kicks in the process of the sheriff's, Oak County Sheriff's Department is in the process of seven days. And after seven days, they turn it from an impound to an abandoned vehicle under Michigan law, which enacts a system to the Secretary of State that they'll find the registered owner if they're in Michigan. In your case, your vehicle was registered with a Florida plate. Michigan Secretary of State does not reach out of the state of Michigan to notify registered owners. It's not my obligation because I don't have access to what is lean. It's proprietary information, it's personal information. So in Michigan, there's a system where called lean or whatever, I can't remember what the acronym stands for, but that's where the vehicle, like where that stuff's reported at. Now the tow trucks or the towing companies don't have access to contact the owners whatsoever. Like that's where he called the sheriff's department. The sheriff's department then basically is in charge of finding the owner and which in turn they contacted Waterford, which is where it was stolen out of. And then and then went through a process where then Waterford in a very short period of time said that nope, it's it's good to go or on yeah, to the they, next step and then that starts the timing step which which they go what, what it goes in and they try to not find it if it's not in michigan the sheriff's department gets back a form which is called a tr-52 which is gives us the right to auction it or, or wherever there's two ways they can do it but this this would be go to auction since the vehicle comes back with no registered owner oakland county sheriff's department takes an extra step above the uh, Michigan state law and when, they're off, when they list their auction on their website they put out an asterisk on the left side of it and that means that there's nobody been contacted so they let it set for another 30 days so that auction went by we waited another 30 days before the vehicle was actually auctioned in January and that auction is done by the sheriff's department so the sheriff comes out sheriff's department comes out and then puts on that auction and then that's where it was auctioned off to um john the guy that was in the last video that is the new owner of it so basically basically i mean i i feel like at least the method of contact like our system is very flawed for the fact that like supposedly which still haven't confirmed or denied yet that i did receive a message supposedly from a phone call from waterford to put all these plans into effect and that's where all this happened very quickly that literally like i said i mean our stuff report of solar our video goes live september 30th the vehicle's abandoned on october 3rd they pick it up and the whole process begins the waterford releases it and then any way shape or form like it was in their possession from october 3rd was listed in the first auction in december but actually got auctioned off in january um it never got notified about any of it so that's the part where the towing company did their their due diligence as far as what they're required to do so is there we we did our due diligence the Oakland county sheriff's department did their due diligence and where it goes from there is you know, up to the state or to other police departments or whatever how it goes. So, so that's the update from buyers in uh, that part of it. So, I feel like we're a news investigation team, and it's an ongoing investigation for us to look into some of the other links in it. But we did get to close out one link in the in the chain of events that happened. So, appreciate your time, Bill. Oh, I appreciate so, it. So, Bill, straightening it out. All right, thanks, guys. On to the next. All right, so we have tracked down. This is where the truck got picked up from when it got towed or reported as an abandoned vehicle. And like, and what's weird is like, so far what I've been told is like that somebody just moved in and then it was in their driveway. I thought we were gonna go to a private place, but we're in a freaking apartment complex. So like, who was in charge of figuring out that this thing was just here? I, I don't, don't know. Once again, weird dates, October 3rd, it got picked up. 
our video went live on September 30th. So who became wise to our video possibly that then said, ah, forget this, we gotta get rid of this. So not sure. Questions, questions, questions. Who knows? Stay tuned. Full story at 10. Thanks, folks. <laughs> All right, so you just saw the buyers. You saw us go to the place where it was picked up from. And everything just continues to lead to more questions. Like, because, I mean, literally, once again, this thing got stolen in September. Uh, our video comes out September 30th. Uh, it gets reported as needing picked up from a private thing on October 3rd. We took you there and it just doesn't add up. It left our property, as you saw in our first video, intentionally taken. Like this was not a drunk guy trying to get home. This was not a uh, out of convenience. It was, the, it was in the cars were running and I needed to get to my next spot. This was the person came in a vehicle, two of them, got dropped off in a vehicle. So they already had transportation. So it was taken with intention of what? Because that's the thing. We totally expected this thing was going to be stripped out, sold, painted, retitled, whatever, whatever process was gonna happen when it left here. Not that within a week, it was gonna be abandoned in an apartment parking lot and taken to a tow yard where it sat during its course of action to then get to where it gets auctioned off and this other guy owns it and all the stuff happens within miles of my shop. So brings real questions to what happened. The other is that when we had the truck after it had been stolen and we thought recovered, it still had all my stuff in it. Like there was Amazon packages with our address. Like, so if an investigation was done, did the police department go there wouldn't they have taken everything out of the truck and then questioned stuff? Wouldn't I have been questioned again when the truck was found to say, hey, we found the truck. Like, not that there'd be a possible random voicemail that was left that I never returned their call. And then within days later, it gets released that like, yep, auction the thing off. Obviously, the guy doesn't care about it. Like, I feel like there should have been follow up with it that said, hey, we found it. We want to know more about it. We want to know more about these people in there. We want to know more about the, it's an ongoing investigation. I mean, should it not be? Like, in, once again, this is happening locally, not across state or across country or anything like that. This is all like my shop, my shop is nine miles from the wrecking yard where it was stored at, where Byers is at. It was reported abandoned less than five miles from my shop where it was taken from. We found it less than five miles the other direction. So it went from all of this is happening right here, local community, not, hey, it was found in Florida and nothing like that. This all happened right here. So why was I not contacted at the time that it was recovered? Like, and if they left a message or uh, a supposed message like, okay, well, wouldn't you do a drive-by? Wouldn't you stop in? I mean, it's an ongoing investigation for grand theft. Like, I mean, this isn't like somebody took the fucking Happy Meal toy or whatever from McDonald's. I mean, this is a $10,000 vehicle that was taken. So the answers that we have just lead to more questions. And the sheriff's department is updated, like obviously enough that buyers got interested in it based on people contacting that like, that they're like, hey, we gotta make sure that we explain our process and how all this worked, which I mean, from a state level, the process is flawed. Like, I mean, because it's registered out of state, that meant that they didn't contact anybody, even though the police report is for me right here in the local community. Um, so that part happens. So, where is that investigation or where is that part happening? So Sheriff's Department basically takes, I, I mean, I have the chain of events that got described to us today at Byers and where all those steps are. And it seems like there's all kinds of holes in there. So forget the flawed system. I feel like there's people that just did not, they, they did less than the minimum that should have been done to try and get to the bottom of it because 
has anybody at that apartment complex? Like this is the stuff that yet we still have to find out. So is the next steps in it? Did somebody go there, question people? Did they see like the, the person that called it in? What were the questions with them? Like literally as far as we know, like as far as what we have documented at this point in time is person there reported it that needs to be picked up. Uh, buyers went to go there. They contact sheriff's department or the VIN got ran or whatever, found out it was listed as stolen. Sheriff's department goes there and tells buyers to pick it up. Buyers takes it back to their yard. Sheriff's department contacts Waterford Police Department, which is where it was stolen from, and they're the ones that have the active investigation. And then from there, I got nothing other than Waterford Police Department calling buyers and saying, yep, go ahead and auction it off. So there's gaps to fill in all the way down to getting to John, the current owner of it, that how did how did all this stuff come into play? It just seems like there's there's more questions than answers after we just got some answers to some questions, just lead to more questions. But that's the update on the truck. So it will be ongoing in our part to try and figure out what we got going on. So, but thanks guys. Bob. How's it going, Tom? Bob. Yeah, how's it going? The camera, the people in camera land would like to know what you got going on with the back of the Durango. They have already messaged? Yep. Oh, well, um, that X right there isn't enough. And I attached it to the wrong bar thinking I could stretch the rules a little bit, but it didn't really work out. So now I'm gonna add more to strengthen everything and some more down there, because we went from a tiny engine to a medium. We haven't even talked about that yet, Bobby. That's I know, but that's stuff. another secret to like lead them on. But yeah, there's gonna be a couple more horsepowers like under the hood, so. We have to stiffen the back end up a little bit. So that's what I got going on. Plus I got tubs in. Now I'm gonna start sheet metal floors and back panels back here after the the owner of the vehicle tells me what he wants to put back here. Tell us about that carbon, Bobby. That carbon is forged crushed carbon. light of what it does. It's not normal weaved carbon. It's crazy. It's cool. Nobody's got it yet. At least we don't think they do. As far as I know, nobody has it. Right. Not in race car, drag car world. Then again, we've been on it for like four months, so maybe they have it It's definitely in like the, the, the road race thing kind of stuff. I've seen that, but not, not tubs and tubing covers we have sitting over there on the table. And we have a four by eight flat sheet to do door panels and other panels and the rest of the chassis. Oh, but check this out. This was Bobby's thing the other day, but maybe we don't show anybody because then they would know how to open it. So like, this is how a Durango opens. Oh no doesn't open. Bobby added this. Don't turn it. What the hell? <laughs> it's going to twist the handle off. So now it has its factory trunk release, kind of, sort of. So a cable <laughs> operated through. Oh. The only bad thing is we still have the squirter for the rear windshield wiper, but no longer do we have the rear windshield wiper. When you break this off, when you twist it and you're not supposed to, <laughs> we'll put the wiper back oh, on. Oh, there you go. Because it, it works pretty easy. We gotta get one more gas shock because it had an electric motor over here that we eliminated and that one doesn't quite lift it enough. MZ. Here's all Bobby's lightning. Lightning getting rid of as much material as possible to try and get it lighter. So. 3,000, 3,200. So. Let's hope for 3,200. That'd be our goal. So this is going to weigh 2,650 when it is done. And then you put the driver in and it's 3,200. <laughs> <laughs> then the driver makes it 3,200, so. Well, with that soaked fire suit. <laughs> yeah, that one weighs might. a lot more. Yeah, it might. So. 
But so yeah, so that's what Bobby's been working on is this back end. Obviously he's got to get that approved, his idea on how he's going to do that. But he's going to get that okay and then work on getting this stuff together. And like I said, at, uh, when you see it in Vegas, it will be further along than it was the last time you saw it. And Right, and all the weirdness with the bars is for the back seat passengers to still have some kind of space. So literally we're building a ProMod chassis with back seats. So four seat four seated ProMod slash SUV slash all steel grocery getter. That's us, so pull right behind there. Straight behind it. Why is that air compressor working so hard? Hey, it stayed hooked. What yeah. are you complaining about? That guy was like, I said, the first guy when I said, ah, it's all right, we're only going to Flint. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> I keep that reminded. <laughs> 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 